What's going on, motivation team? How y'all doing today? I apologize, I've been absent. But hey, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? We back. And the days that I will be absent is because I'm, you know I'm still working on finding new new beginnings in places. You know what I'm saying? Things work out, things don't work out. It's just, you know what I'm saying? I'm letting God guide me right now anyway. So, hey, if God guided me, I'm doing something right. You feel me? That's all that matters. And y'all, I ain't gonna talk y'all y'all this. I'll say this morning. Tonight, it is, it's kind of nighttime, but I got, I got help of an LED light helping me out right now. This young with $30 on Amazon. So it better come through for sure. So, let's go ahead and get into the verse of the day. And today's verse of the day, we got Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which also in, in Christ Jesus. Let's keep going. I ain't gonna lie. Let's go down to verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. I had said, this is something that we must take in and imitate. Imitate, y'all know imitate me? Mock, copy. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Let this, it said, let this, let this mind be in you. It means that we have a choice. We choose to walk into, into Christ. We choose to walk into it and we have to let it be. It's like right now, me personally, I'm choosing to have the right mindset. I'm choosing to remove them, to remove these distractions that's distracting me. You know what I'm saying? I'm choosing to do these things that I know God, that I know Jesus wouldn't like me doing. That's what I'm choosing to do. And I'm saying I must walk into it. I must walk into my change. I must walk into my new person to me. Me re, re, restoring myself. Making a new person of me. You feel me? And that's what I got to say for this verse right there. Y'all let me know what y'all got to say. And I ain't going to lie, y'all. I think I think this video be going to be long. <laughs> I think this video going to be long. We in chapter 19. So let's go ahead and get it started. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, this is a requirement of the law that the Lord has commanded. Tell the Israelites to bring you a red heifer without defect. Oh, hold on, y'all. I know I said heifer, but it's, it's in the Bible. Go to get it. Open your book. Go to chapter 19 in Numbers, verse 2. If y'all don't believe me, here you go. Hey, Siri right here to, to say it. Heifer. And if y'all want me to say it no more, I'm going to let Siri say it for the rest of the video. How about that? All right. So, without the faith of blemish that has never been under a yoke. And a heifer. It is a cow that hasn't been pregnant and cannot produce milk. The requirements made this animal rarer, even more rare. It made it even more rare. The priest is to take some cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet wool and throw them onto the burn Onto the burning heifer. After that, the priest must wash his clothes and bathe himself with water. He may then come into the camp, but he will be ceremonially unclean till evening. The man who burns him must also wash his clothes and bathe with water, and he too will be unclean till evening. A man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and put them in a ceremonially clean place outside the camp. They are to be kept by the Israelite community for use in the water of cleansing. It is for purification from sin. The man who gathers up the ashes of the heifer must also wash his clothes, and he too will be unclean till evening. This will be a lasting ordinance both for the Israelites and for the foreigners residing among them. What makes this sacrifice different is that, is that the blood from the cow is burned with the sacrifice. We would probably think that to be unclean meant to be full of sin. But it actually meant that the person just had to be kept apart from the community of worship until they were purified. This is the law that applies when a person dies in a tent. Anyone who enters the tent and anyone who is in it will be unclean for seven days. And every open container without a lid fastened on it will be unclean. Anyone out in the open who touches someone who has been killed with a sword or someone who has died a natural death or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave will be unclean for seven days. Those who were potentially contaminated will be set aside until it could be seen if they got a disease from the dead body. 
For the unclean person, put some ashes from the burned purification offering into a jar and pour fresh water over them. Then a man who is ceremonially clean is to take some his salt, dip it into the, wa into the water and sprinkle the tent and all the furnaces and the people who were there. He must also sprinkle anyone who has touched a human bone or a grave or anyone who has been killed or anyone who has died of natural death. The man who is clean is to sprinkle those who are unclean on the third and seventh days. And on the seventh day, he is to purify them. Those who are being cleansed must wash their hands and bathe with water. And that evening will be, they will be clean. But if those who are unclean do not purify themselves, they must be cut off from the community. So this was a powerful prophetic picture of the work of Jesus under the new covenant. The ashes of the red Asher. was the work of Jesus. The water was working as the word of God and the spirit of God. The person, the work of Jesus Christ with the work of God's spirit through the word of God brings cleansing even from the power and impurity of death. The man who sprinkles the water of the cleansing must also wash his clothes and anyone who touches the water of cleansing will be unclean till evening. Anything that an unclean person touches become unclean. Anyone who touches it becomes unclean until evening. And we're going to go ahead and shoot straight to, to chapter 20. In the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed at Kadesh. There, Miriam died and was buried. She was the first of Moses' siblings to die in the wilderness, and her death was a demonstration of the fulfillment of God's promise that the generation that refused to enter Canaan would die in the wilderness. Now there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, If only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why do you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness that we and, that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Their frustration led them to make outrageous statements and they talked like they had no trust in God. Now the younger generation is starting to act like the older unbelieving generation. They all doubted God's promise to lead them into the promised land. I wonder if this is where it started from. Is this where our doubt, like us, because that's why we always tell children or we tell people that's around children, don't say that around the kid. Because, hey, obviously... They've been doing it. They talking like this around the kids. They talking right like, like this. They gonna grow up saying it. With Israel's attitude, the new generation could turn out just as unbelieving and untrusting in God as the old generation did. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock could drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the, and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. Hold on, let me reread. Let me reread that part. Hold on. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they will, so they and their livestock will drink. I don't see nowhere did the Lord tell Moses to say that, y'all. Because it was times when God told him to say a word or two, but this time he ain't telling him to say nothing. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. These were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord and where he was proved holy among them. Moses showed unbelief. He didn't trust God to correct his people and he took it upon himself. Moses acted like an Egyptian prince than a servant for the Lord. 
some of the sins that Moses had did was he had disobedience, not doing what God told him to do. Thinking God's work must include something more than a word, being a bad example in front of the people. Now, I'm going to speak on thinking God's work must include something more than a word. Now, what I'm doing right now, I would be wrong to think that I'm doing this only for Y'all know what YouTube, you know what I'm saying? You can make money easy off social media. I will be thinking wrong just to be doing this just for clicks, subscriptions, for subscribers. I will be wrong. Disobedience. If God told me, if God told me to do something and I'm like, ugh, I ain't finna do that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna do that. Everybody know what disobedience is. And being a bad example in front of, in front of the people. Now, Moses, he just went off on them. This is somebody that God is talking through. Moses went off on the people. Us, as us, us leaders, we can't do that. If I go off on y'all, if I see up here, go off on y'all through this camera, I'm in the wrong. Completely in the wrong. Let me go and get done with this video because my eyes starting to hurt. <laughs> but yeah, I hope y'all understand though. So, the word Meribah means quarreling. And I don't know what Meribah meant until I seen that footnote at the bottom. It said it meant quarreling. And I didn't know, I don't know what quarreling meant. So I looked it up. Thank God for Google. And it meant to have a, a heated argument. And I'm going to read that sentence again so we can make sense to us. Because that's what I had to do when I was reading. These were the waters of Meribah, where the Israelites quarreled with the Lord. And where he was proved holy among them. All right. We have verse 14, y'all, 14. Moses sent messages from Kadesh to the king of Edom, saying, this is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that come, up, that, that come on us? Our ancestors went down into Egypt and we lived there many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our ancestors. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our cry and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here in Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel among the king's highway and not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed through your territory. I'm going to repeat that. Not the whole thing, but just that first few, just the first few sentences. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. This is what your brother Israel says. Now, keep in mind, brothers, this is what your brothers. So they were now ready to go closer to the land of Canaan. They, this is the closest they ever been to getting into the land of Canaan. But Edom answered, you may not pass through here. If you try, we will march out and attack you with the sword. The Israelites replied, we will go along the main road and if we or our livestock drink any of your water we will pay for. We only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Again, they answered. You may not pass through. Then Edom came out against them with a large and powerful army. Since Edom refused to let them go through their territory, Israel turned away from them. Israel was commanded to treat the Edomites, Edomites as brothers. But God showed us through Israel how to leave the judgment of those who hurt us up to the Lord. And love those who acted as enemies against us, even if they are brothers. They was to treat them like brothers. They thought they would be like, okay, since you are brothers, come on through. Nah, they said no. No. They like, nah, y'all not finna come through. Just even if y'all didn't want to pass through, nah. And them turning away, not retaliating, not going off. That was that was how it should have been. You know what I'm saying? We, some people, some of us got to take that in. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes somebody say, say something to you, you just want to retaliate, say something back. Just turn the other cheek. Ain't that what they say? Just turn the other cheek. <laughs> the whole Israelite community set out against Kadesh and came to the Mount Ahor. At Mount Hor. Bro, y'all, it's in it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. In Mount Hor, near the border of Adon, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, 
Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will not enter the land I will give Israelites because both of you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Get Aaron and his son Eleazar and take them up Mount Hor. Remove Aaron's garment and put this and put them on his son. For Aaron will be gathered to his people. He will die there. Moses did as the Lord commanded. They went on Mount Hor in the sight of the whole community. Moses removed Aaron's garments and put them on, on his son. And Aaron died there on top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. And when the whole community learned that Aaron had died, all the Israelites mourned him for 30 days. 38 years, not much movement, little progress. Our walk with God can be the same way. God tells us to, to trust him, have faith. The moment that we show that we are starting to lose that faith, he'll make that destination take even longer for us to get there until we learn. I believe that a lot. God gave Israel chances to believe in him since the time they left Egypt into the wilderness. All on the way to the promised land. They complained all the way on the way to the promised land. They almost switched up on him. The passing of Aaron was, was a significant landmark in the history of Israel. When Moses and Eleazar returned to the camp, Eleazar wore his father's garments and Israel knew he was now the high priest. Y'all, let me know what y'all thought about that for the day. I ain't talked that long in a minute. You know what I'm saying? My eyes blurry. You know what? Let's go ahead and get this video wrapped up. Y'all, thank y'all for subscribing. Thank y'all for liking. Thank y'all for supporting. You know what I'm saying? This journey gonna be... This, this all it is a journey. This is a road that I'm I'm going through and I'm enjoying every every bit of it. You know what I'm saying? So y'all thank y'all for being here with me. And y'all keep smiling. Be you. I'm out.